Hello YouTubers, it's that time of year. So this is where I started my um, indoor seedlings last year. And this is where I get to start them this year. Yay, for a new stand. So I am actually gonna start here really quick. I'm gonna put in some cold weather crops. I've been trying at different years, times of the year to see what fits um, Oregon Zone 8B because I seem to get away with some things and I don't get away with others. But we're supposed to get snow this next week, so we'll see. But I have a few other things I wanna show off. So um, a Sweet Serenity gave this plant, friendship plant, to me for my Christmas present and it's already got a, a, a baby plant to share. And one of the fun things about that is, is that my daughter and her roommate at school and my niece and some other, it's kind of like a fad to do house plants again. And so it's, you're not an old lady, an old cat lady if you do house plants now. So um, my daughter figured out that she had 15 different kinds of house plants that she'd just taken the starts off from me. And we've been sharing with her roommate, my niece, and um, this serenity, and it's just super fun. And so here's another plant baby to put into the mix. So there's a few other things that I wanted to show you guys, and it's gonna take me a second, so hopefully this won't be too boring. I mean, we're talking seed planting and stuff like that. So we're gonna first start out with what everybody's doing, which is seeds, right? So I got a handful of my seeds. I'm not even gonna show you guys them all, but I got, um, I seem to have wanted onions for, because I've only grown a small amount, bok choy. These are all my cold, um, cold frost hardy stuff that I'm gonna get going on right away. But that means I have been spending time in the lovely seed catalogs from Baker Creek that y'all are um, getting in your houses. Um, but the main place I'm going to be hanging out with up here in my little space is sunflowers because from my one of my other videos, I told you that one of my sons is getting married and that's going to be their flower. So we're going to try to grow that. So what else am I going to try to grow? I am going to try to grow tea leaves. Camellia sienesis. Sienesis, I think. Well, these will grow in my zone and um, the seeds are kind of amazing. So I got some seeds just off of Amazon and they were talking about how you had to uh, soak them and then slowly dry them out so that the seed, the outside part will um, crack before you do that. So today is going to start the soaking process and it, they said it will take... Uh, up to three years before you can actually harvest any leaves. But I've kind of got the long game going on when it comes to um, my outdoor garden, you know, the bay leaf tree that I showed you guys the other day and some of the memorial garden. Some of that stuff is definitely for a long-term investment of time. And uh, one of the interesting things I learned when I was learning about the tea seeds is that green tea and black tea come from the same tea leaves. Green tea is the fresh green growth the black tea is the older leaves that have been oxidized some more. So kind of a neat piece of trivia if you're interested in it. Oh, I gotta show you this too. Okay, you're like, what is this lump? I grew my first ginger. Okay, so this probably should have been harvested at the end of the summer and I'm kind of glad I remembered it because it might have been getting uh, a little softened, but I'm not sure if that's how they normally are when you don't buy them at the store. But I had a little tiny start of uh, ginger and I put it in the ground and it grew this and I'm actually really excited about it. I knew that the, the jug, I'd forgotten that it was even in there and then um, the the container I grew it in actually grew like a one giant blade of grass, you know, uh, ginger grass I guess would be what she'd call it and I was like, oh there's actually something in there growing, yay! So I will be trying this again but I think that this is going to go in my hoop house efforts, my greenhouse. So I am trying, going to be trying to be really good to have a productive hot hoop house. And I did inherit from my mom a second greenhouse and I have plans for that. Um, but that will be down the road. I'll be telling you about that later. So some other things that I am going to try to grow is hosta. Hostas are really, um, lush and green and big leaved here in Oregon. Our weather is like really perfect to grow them. 
Um, and I know they're really easy to get starts off of other people, but I have one variety. So I actually ordered seeds from um, a bunch of varieties. And so we'll see how that goes. You know, the thing is, when you buy seeds, you get lots of plants. When you buy a plant, one plant, you get one plant. So they have directions for me to do that too, and I'm excited. So that was actually one of the things I put on my Christmas list. So thank you, Aunt Kathy. Appreciate that. And um, this is from last year when I was YouTubing. Tambra Duggar, she was a fellow um, startup YouTuber, and she had a beautiful garden. She says it got away from her last year, which I think it happens to all of us almost every year, right? This is a little bit of it gets away from you because there's a lot of work. You know, you wait for it, wait for it in the winter, and then it's a frenzy in the spring to try to keep up with it. And then who knows what life throws at you during the regular time. But what she has in here that I'm most excited about is coxcomb. So um, I've never grown this before, and um, so it looks like this, and I'm hoping there's some red ones in there too. And uh, so I'm looking forward to um, trying a few of these seeds early up here in this, and then I'll put some out when the time is right, because um, you can start them early. But they're kind of an annual, so we'll see how that goes. So um, <clears throat> I am also, an, uh, I, you guys know I'm, an, I'm a writer. I'm on my writing journey. I have an agent, and I'm out on proposal, and... I'm often telling you, like, I think, I don't think I remember to tell you that I had another uh, uh, refusal this last week and I have another one that I'm waiting on. So it's like, ah, you know, there's always this thing, but there's a few things that I do in my artistic world that keep my brain happy that I thought some of you gardener people might appreciate. So one of them is this planner. So this is called a Habanichi planner. So now I added the plastic cover and the little tab. So it usually just comes with its little manila Manila outside envelope like this and then um, and I added the the pull tie so I've added two but it is a um, it is a planner that is uh, made in Japan and it but it has I think it's called Toma River paper so the paper is thin and light but it makes it so that the ink doesn't go through so you can actually do um, watercolor type of pen and um, some of your serious pen I can do my some calligraphy things in there paint and draw and it will not bleed through from one page to the other. So the layout is, you can get a couple, that this is the cousin, the techno cousin size, but it has the calendar, regular calendar layout. And then it goes into um, like the daily, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that way. And then there is one page per day when you get further back. Um, so it's like, you know, one day here, one day here. So you can do some journaling type of stuff. And then at the very beginning, it has, I'm not sure how you guys would use this, but I use this for my garden plants. It's actually a like one month laid out with 30 dates. So most important thing is that the pages don't bleed through. So it is quite versatile for someone who's a little artsy in their endeavors to be a planner. So that's called a Habanichi Techno cousin and they do make one that's um narrower like this and a little bit taller and um i think i don't exactly know what page layouts it has on the inside so you want to watch for that and the other thing that i have that fits this zo zone that you might be interested in if uh if for you a garden is a palette like it is for me then there's all kinds of fun to be had and this is called an elastic pen case and it's uh yay see all the pens yay and it makes it so that I can unfold and fiddly D my, my heart's content. And this would be my favorite pen for brush lettering. It's called a um, Furunosuko hard tipped pen. And my kids, my daughters especially, are totally having fun with this. There's something new coming out. This is, uh, I don't know what brand it is. Oh, it's just a good old Bic. But this is a fake tattoo pen. And um, they are using it to draw on themselves and it lasts for three or four days. And they're really um, goofing it up. Maybe I'll see if I can get some pictures of that in here right now since you can see what they were doing. And then the other thing I want to show you guys is some books. Um, so if this is boring to you, sorry. So this little thing right here is where I produce my podcast when I'm doing my podcast, but I have some fun stuff. So this is my favorite author and her book, this book came out yesterday. So um, it's Christian fiction, historical romance, and it's kind of spy espionage, that kind of thing. And um, I just wanna give her a shout out to Rosanna White. And this one is a um, 
collection. So there's four authors, but this gal, Darlene Pansera, she is one of my, um, she's kind of a critique buddy, but she's also a mentor teacher style. And so I wanted to shout her out just because she has been being so gracious to help me in my journey. And again, historical romance. And look at that cover. Isn't it beautiful? I think covers are like green growing sprouts. You know, they're kind of just as beautiful. So this is another Katik buddy who actually had, this is book three in a series and her book came out not that long ago. And I don't know if I've actually given it a shout out on here. So I wanted to play around with that. And, um, in December, December 1st, actually, it was a Sunday, I helped with the book launch. So I went over when she, this book was brand new coming out. And um, this one is interesting because it actually is historically um, pointing at the um, women's version of the Ku Klux Klan. So if that's a piece of interest in your history, if you want to see what that's about, then go ahead and check out Camille Eide because that's also very fun. And then this one is actually pretty cool because uh, Nora Peacock is the writer, but she actually, uh, I actually wrote her a forward. So my little name is in there. And this is happening more and more where my name shows up on different places in a book and I'm waiting for it to show up across the bottom. So patience is a virtue, wahaha. And um, I'm working hard on that patience thing, not such an easy thing. And last but not least, oh so precious to my heart, um, I wanted to give this book a shout out because um, I lost my mom, very much my best friend, one of them next to my husband probably, and it's been a journey for sure. I lost her in September and this book has been very fun to me and very medicine. And so I wanted to put it up here just in case someone else is dealing with um, sorrow and grief and a broken heart and needs to spend some time dreaming and seeing what heaven is going to be like because this has really been an interesting read. So um, uh, with that said, I think that might be all that I had up here. I just was so full of exciting things. And so I think now I am just going to start planting some of my stuff and let you watch me play around and get my fingers dirty a little bit. Let's plant some babies. Hello there, YouTube. I'm about ready to give you a little seedling update. I've planted some more and I wanna show you how to progress on some. But um, I also wanted to tell you that I figured something out. I figured out that I do have a um, kind of a desire for my garden this year that I wasn't expecting. And um, if you've watched some of my previous videos just recently, you'll see that I have a memorial garden that I started in remembrance of my mom who I lost this last summer. Um, but part of the motivation behind that is flowers, flowers, flowers. So there's also a wedding. One of my sons is getting married this summer and her, his bride-to-be's desired flower is sunflowers. And so I feel like I want to practically buy out the store and plant as many as possible so she can use those. And so that requires a big major decision. I am going to keep my chickens penned up because that's one of the I lose to birds, I lose to slugs, and I lose to chicken scratches, mostly. Those are my three primary enemies. Occasional dogs to knock things over, occasional uh, mole get something, different things like that. Uh, but that's what's been happening, and I just, I can't handle the sadness anymore. So this next couple of weeks, I'm actually going to get a better setup for the chickens to dust themselves and scratch, um, fluff, you know, get themselves so they don't have mites or whatever they do that for. And then um, also a better setup for continuous feeding because I just go feed them every day, but I wanna make sure if they're in there all the time, they have something to do. So they might eat a little bit more, and but I'm not, I was, you know, I would keep them up for a couple days if I thought the, the bushes need a break or the grass needed a break or whatever. But my pen is plenty big enough and all of that. So long live the flowers. And with that, let me show you some of my flower starts, some of the things that I've got going. And I'm trying my hand at starting my peppers and tomatoes earlier to see if they can get a little bit more mature and not too leggy in the house before they go out. And uh, again, I have the goal to have my greenhouse be a more of a hot house this summer. So peppers, melons, uh, a couple of tomatoes, but mostly peppers and melons. I'm gonna try to fill that thing with those this uh, summer so that they can grow 
even when it's hot or even see if they if I can get it hot enough for those because it's not always very hot here in Oregon it's very very uh cloud cover is kind of a constant and so you know 70s and 80s is always it hardly ever gets up into that healthy 90s hundreds it's kind of a even keel temperature so let's look at some updates here Okay, so these are overcrowded snapdragons that I started from my own seeds. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to thin them, but I might actually thin them. Uh, I need to get some more potting soil, but I might thin them to try to keep them because these guys, once I harden them off a little bit, they'll go out because they, they seem to handle. We have a one more big snow, or we have some snow and cold, so I might wait a couple weeks just to get them a little bit hardier. Um, but I'm going to get those, uh, you know, get snapdragons like you get at the store in the spring. They're big enough to have uh, blooms before you actually get a couple weeks into the summer, you know, M you know, more mature to start with. So I have two tea seeds in here and three tea seeds in here. They haven't come up, so that might be a, a bust, but we'll see. Um, Bells of Ireland, Golden Alyssum, Lupine. So the Lupine is probably ready to start hardening off but I'm gonna let it go ahead and get a little bit bigger too before we do that. So my goal, if you can see, was to not overplant. I didn't want to have too many um, plants in one pot so that I could let them really get big. Um, I can't remember the name of this one. It is called a verbascum, verbascum, snowy spears. I don't know, I've never uh, managed to get one to get that big before, so that's pretty cool. These are the the ones that I got from, these are Coxcomb from uh, one of my friends on YouTube. I'm not thinking of her name at this moment, but then we've got the butterfly milkweed. So these are an herb, or they're a butterfly attractant. So perennial flower. These are different petunias. So petunias will definitely have to get potted out if I want to keep them going. But the goal is flowers, flowers, flowers. So I have some pansies. And I'll be showing you outside where I did some planting outside, but see those could get actually quite a bit bigger and they could probably share space a little bit more. I did thin this the once already, but it probably needs it again. Here we have um, lavender seeds and I planted a lot in there and it looks like there's three growing and there one is super tiny. But the fun part of this is um, there's a couple in this one here that are on bigger, but I planted that really thick. But I actually, there was a, we were on a, a vacation trip and they, we were at a Dairy Queen and they had lavenders that were at the prime of giving off their seed. So I just grabbed some seed pods and that's what those are. So lavender off of seed and collected on the side of the thing. My delphiniums didn't come up. Um, yeah, echinacea, which I usually have a really hard time with, has multiple plants in it. So that's nice. And then um, the bee balm also. So those are exciting. So I might actually plant those out. Um, these were mystery seeds that I'd collected when I was out on a hike. It looks to me like they're really close to the California poppies. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I know they tell you that you can't disturb the roots on those. So we'll see if they actually succeed. So we got some lettuce greens that are um, just starting to be ready to go. And back there is um, sunflower seeds that I actually sprout for the purpose of eating. And then here we just have the beginnings of our peppers. I don't think any of them are up yet because it hasn't been that warm up here. Back here though, I'm doing basil and I want this to get nice and big before we put it out. So there's four kinds of basil. See the one that's purple back there, it's pretty. Here's a different batch of echinacea because I'd like to have several places of that in my yard. And then let's see. Oh, I forgot to show you. This one has, a, this is a reusable, I, this is a grocery store container, you know, like something you'd get food in, food grade repurposed. And I planted some more petunias in there and it's like a little mini greenhouse. I don't want to try to open it in there. So obviously these are seeds that I harvested off my own plants, so they'll probably be cross-pollinated for color. Um, but I'm okay with that. And here is the hosta update. I'll probably have to make a little section just for the hosta. Hosta update. These got planted on January 7th. And these little babies are starting to take shape. They're actually not quite as um, a much of a pushover as they were at the beginning. So, And I noticed that there's a lot more of them starting to come up too. So they must be a little bit happy. 
um, with what they're doing there. So we'll just keep letting them grow until um, I can get them out in the spring. And here's the beginning of our tomato. So I tried to do uh, only like three tomatoes. Oh, they're already, these were down below. So they're reaching because they were down below because I didn't put them up here until after they'd had a couple days of being out of the um, soil. But I'm my goal is to not plant too many of each variety in these tubs so that they can actually get really tall. Um, and these shelves are actually movable. So if I really need to get it taller, I can to make room for that. And so this was um, lavender seeds. I actually planted this pack, but the weird thing is, is that those are lavender by smell and these are marjoram by smell. So I don't know if I spilled seeds in there or what, but um, I'm thinking about taking the tops off the marjoram and uh, trying to see if I can make those more successful. So again, tomatoes over here, just a couple variety, couple of each variety. And um, here in Oregon, we don't do uh, okra very well. We don't have a hot enough season. So um, I thought I would try. I, everybody says they don't transplant well. So those are probably gonna be a lost cause, but it's kind of fun to see them grow and we'll, we aren't losing anything. I already had the seed packs, so, cause I've tried before. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. This is goji, two goji bushes, and they're starting to come along. Um, and then back here behind where all my cords are, I have fennel, which these I should probably take out and go harden them off because I think these will do well even in the cold weather, even in the snow. So I should probably start hardening these off and um, putting them out there. And then I did catnip. Um, I don't know anything about, the only catnip experience I have is inside the cat toys. So if you have catnip out in your yard, do the cats actually go to it and get in it? And can you use catnip for anything and does it have a pretty bloom? I just sort of grew it for the cats hoping it was an attractive to them, but I haven't done my homework on it, obviously. And then this is an ornamental grass. So I'm going to put these in special places and play with them, tough them up here. They're doing pretty good, I feel like. Um, and away we go. So that is the seed updates. So this is part of the reason why the chickens are getting grounded. See my lovely cabbages that were for my winter enjoyment. I put this fence around there thinking that would help, but no, they just get in there and they knocked my hen and chick box apart. And they ate all that stuff up. And then they hammered my, look at this. Look at my poor, <laughs> that was so pretty just a couple days ago. So now I can take my fence down because I'm actually going to keep my chickens pinned up. And that's all for this YouTube video. Thank you for showing up. I hope you'll click and subscribe and chat with me. Mark here, my senior in high school, managed to make it on the homecoming court. So here he is all spiffied up. And then one of our happy cats has also figured out that the bird feeders make pretty great bird traps. See you next time.